Meet Anthony Femia, a cheesemonger, but not just any cheesemonger, an internationally recognised cheesemonger who was the first Australian to be invited to France to select his very own flavour of Comte. So there's eight affineurs or cheese maturers out there in the Jura and they source from just over 200 different fruitery or, or cheese makers and Marcel Petit is, is number one. They're the ones who revolutionise Comte. This episode will have you become an expert on how and why to pair cheese with wines when breaking out the chopping board to serve a platter. But Anthony is going to be pairing a cheese he's never done before. And this one is a make or break moment. <laughs> Wine and cheese, an iconic duo. Think Barbie and Ken, Bonnie and Clyde, and the Batman to my Robin, Mr. Carlos Santos. <laughs> Master Smilier himself is not here. He's actually in Portugal, but we've got a not even a step in, a step up. <laughs> Anthony Femia um, from Maker and Monger in the Paran Markets. Thanks so much for coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited yeah. about this. Um, this is, yeah, uh, uh, the dream of my partner, Emily, who loves to break out a good old block board yeah. um, on a Sunday and enjoy wine and cheese and we just make shit up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never until hearing about, you know, your career path mm -hmm. and your because you are a, a cheesemonger. Yes, yeah. Like, like that's a career. Yeah, it's a career. I mean, yeah. like fishmonger but just different smell, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a much better smell. Yeah. Although... There are some stinky cheeses. There are some very stinky cheeses, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Anthony... Obviously, we are a wine podcast, so we are going to be pairing wines and cheese today. But also, you know, the goal for myself and our audience is listening is, you know, we're obviously going to have specifics here today, but we'd yes. love to get some overarching learnings as well about, you know, camembert with yes. and some of those really popular cheeses mm -hmm. um, and also different price points. So yep. you bought in a bunch of cheeses today. Yes. Um, where would you like to start? And uh, first of all, as you explain the cheeses, I'd then love yeah. to hear about your start. How did you get into becoming a cheesemonger? Yeah, so I became a, um, a cheesemonger or I would have been about 18 years ago. Um, I was studying applied finance at Macquarie Uni in Sydney and um, I got a job with my my mum on the weekends at a uh, deli that she was working in down at Moringa Mall and uh, up in Sydney and got put in charge of the cheese counter one day because the guy was sick and having been trained as a bar um, barista and making coffees, I did not know what I was doing. I just knew what we ate at home, um, which being an Italian background was things like pecorino, provolone, reggiano and mozzarella. And um, this lady came up to me and, and she just wanted something after dinner. And I always watched dad eat you know, pecorino papato with the peppercorns, with a, a heavier red and some chopped up cacciatore that we had made the winter before. So I knew that. So I suggested the pecorino for her and the St. Hugo's Shiraz because I'd seen that on a TV commercial. Yep. Um, and she came back the next week and, and said it was a fantastic pairing and what's next. And I couldn't wait to graduate from uni and went over to um, Europe um, on a, a pretty cool trip. First got the Greek islands out of the way with the boys and then focused on, on Italy itself and spent three months uh, there with the, the cheese festival that's part of the slow food um, presider that's on every two years. Um, so did that and then uh, spent some time in Modena at a balsamic vinegar producer and a parmigiano producer and came back and just immersed myself in everything cheese, uh, everything I could read, taste, questions, yeah. In the last, I want to say five years, cheese yeah. boards have become like the thing. Yes. Do you know how like there's huge grazing platters, you rock up to someone's house and someone's prepared that, you know, yeah. I don't need to speak it to you. Yeah. Do you attack them differently? How do you look at a cheese board at a 21st? Oh, like there's always cost versus principles. So... For me, I always do less is best. So I'll do, say, one or two, maybe three great cheeses and do a lot of those, mm. which makes it easier for the, the pairings. Uh, but if it's a younger crowd and they just want to have fun, then I'll just go way out there with all the favourites, like the Triple Cream Breeze, the Easy Blues, the regular cheddars that people know, mm. and then things like Comte that everyone loves that lingering flavor. So, but if it's friends of mine, um, the expectations are high when it's a dinner party, mm. um, especially when I have to supply the cheese every, every you single would? time. I'd yeah. expect that. <laughs> I'd bring a nice bottle of wine Yeah, and maybe yeah. you could tell me what you would pair it with. Yeah, always. And I, I just do one or two incredible cheeses and lately it's just been, you know, a, a slab of Comte and a, a block of fresh honeycomb. It's okay. just the perfect pairing. So 
Well, you've brought three wines in. Yes. Um, these are your selections and your cheeses. Can mm-hmm. you take us through? I'm presuming we're going to be having uh, what's in front of me today, but what, what's the first wine we're having? Yeah, so the first wine's the Domaine uh, Mont Bourgo L'Etoile Cuvée Special. So it's a Chardonnay from the southwest of the Jura. Uh, so it's not cult-like status like the overpriced ones that are out there. Mm-hmm. This one retails between 100 and 120. It's 2017. It's spent four years in barrel, slightly oxidizing. And when you do first taste it, you get all that typical oxidized Chardonnay of the Jura qualities and you get that sort of almost like a sherry-like flavor. But when you have that with the Comte, now I know the Somme's like to taste the wine first, then the cheese. So we'll... Okay. Is that how we're going to do it? Yeah. We'll all right. I'm like going to try that. the wine first. First yeah. of all, wow, such an intense nose. Yeah. Um, so many like overripe fruits in here. Um, thank you. Right. Just grabbing a piece of cheese. Um, delicious. So many overripe fruits here, but it's got this sense of sweetness on the nose yeah. um, that I'm really interested to see if that how that translates to the palate. So... And it doesn't translate to the palate. No. It's more mid back palate, this one. Yeah. A lot of acid. Yeah, high Good acid, notes. not as in uh, so, so much more an intense nose than it is on the mouth. But wow, that acid is really building, isn't it? Yeah. And so with the cheese, um, yeah. so this is Marcel Petit Comte Reservation. So we we are lucky to be the only cheese shop in Australia and, and only cheesemongers to be able to pick a flavor profile. So there's eight affiners or cheese maturers out there in the Jura. And they source from just over 200 different fruitery or, or cheese makers. And Marcel Petit is is number one. They're the ones who revolutionized Comte because before them in the 50s, Comte was almost like an Emmental where it was about 18 to 20 centimeter high with all the holes because they were maturing it at a very warm temperature. Mm. And so what Marcel Petit was, did he took a um, an old war fort uh, called Fort Saint Antoine uh, up in the Jura Mountains, about 1400 meters high and noticed the perfect 10 degrees or around about and 90% humidity and just slowed that ripening process and it just turned the cheese into what we've got now. And the best way to experience this cheese is just sort of snap it in half like a Kit Kat. Smell that interior. Mm. And then just taste that there. And you kind of want to masticate it through the mouth with your tongue. So pushing it to all parts and breathing in and out with the nose just to get that retro-nasal. God, it's good. Oh, and wow. For us, it's flavor profile. With a lot of Comte out there, there's that misconception, older is better. And it's not. It's You want that front of palate and side of palate. So you notice with us, a little bit of sweetness, hints of nuttiness, floral, mm. the honey notes, quite creamy on the palate, even though this is 18 months old. It's a very well-maintained and matured cheese, so you still keep a lot of moisture content in there. And then when you taste the wine, the dairy fat just brings out more of those sort of toast and nut notes, and that sweetness comes to the wine that we get in the aroma. We are coming off the back of a fast food pairing where we tried to do Taco Bell, KFC, and McDonald's with wines. This is a much more enjoyable experience. And you are absolutely right. What a compliment to each other. Yeah. like it. The the... wine by itself would actually be like, this is not for me a wine that you could enjoy a glass of while watching NCIS on the couch. Definitely not, no. This, I don't, I'm still an amateur. Yeah, same. um, But I, I, this, this calls for something to help balance. It's because there's a high sense of alcohol as well. Yeah. I don't know how, how much alcohol is in it right. but there is that sense of um high alcohol at least in it yeah yeah 14 percent. yeah um whereas this kind of that the nuttiness which i do smell in yeah. here complements that's huge they've both got huge sense of body but the yeah. cheese in my in my mouth yeah helps kind of like yeah yeah it's, it, it brings out like almost like the the dried raisin notes of the wine like it it masks all the harshness of an oxidized wine and mm. just brings out all those nuances that you can enjoy. And and when you have the Comte and this, that's when you just want to sit there for a few hours and just, I guess, analyze each each flavor. Like it's it's not one of those ones for a party. It's more of an appreciation. Like if you've got a few friends over and you've been holding this bottle of wine for a while or anything oxidized from the Jura and you want to showcase it quite nicely, um, Comte is the way to go.
You have bought a bubbles in here. Yeah. Uh, we have a very light, um, as in the color of the wine, yeah. um, sparkling red. Yeah, so what are we drinking and, and what are we pairing it with? So we've got the certain red. It's a Poulsard Pinot Noir uh, red again from the, the Jura. And this one, very low alcohol, only only 8%. So you can have quite a bit of fun. And I just brought this one because a lot of our customers buy sparkling reds at Christmas with their glazed hams. And it's usually that party wine. So you want to pair it with those type of party cheeses. So there's party cheeses? Yeah, there's party cheeses. Okay. So there's triple cream brie, uh, which is a great, great party cheese. Okay. And this with a, a bit of fruit bread so. um, works out really Got well. A bit of fruit bread? Yeah. So I try and avoid the pastes. Like, you always get people buying quince paste. Oh, I was going to say, are right. you, you foes with Maggie beer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know her personally, but her products, it's better for those harsher hard cheeses, those cheeses that give you that sting on the tongue, that bite, that bitterness. Fruit paste is perfect for that because that masks that that inefficiency, that, that bad note to that cheese. Mm -hmm. But... Fresh fruits. Cheap and cheerful cheese with a Maggie beer paste maybe? Yeah, 100%. When right. there's lack of flavour and you just want the cream texture, mm. definitely put the, the, that there. So, All right. Going to go for a taste. Yep. This is the triple. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, that is a fun wine. So it's Pinot, right? That's what hence it's yeah, like. Pinot and Pulsar. God, that is drinkable. Yeah. I would even go as far as saying smashable. Yeah, hundred percent. Wow. And then you think about the salads you usually do at summer, and everyone loves to do a buffalo mozzarella and tomato salad. One of my favourite salads. All right. Or a little bit of oil, some basil. This year, the white peaches were absolutely you, stunning. So we encouraged a lot of people to do white peach, mint, buffalo mozzarella, mm. and a little bit of honey. Now that with this wine, again, just absolutely smashable. God, there's levels to Buffalo. Yeah, this so this is one we, we import directly air freighted from Campania in Italy, um, not frozen. Um, so I spend a lot of time and money to bring that in perfectly. God, I'm licking my fingers. That's wonderful stuff. And God, once again, creating different experiences through wine. Yeah. Which is what, you know, I love about wine is, a, you know, what you probably think about cheese creating different experiences. Yeah. I'm now translating to wine, yeah. you know, champagne for celebrations, et cetera. Yes. There seems to be occasions. Do you think the same way? 100%. Are you like yeah. going to an engagement party and you're like, bring in the buffalo? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like you have, oh, it's a christening. It's a cheddar. Yes. Like, do, do you associate <laughs> occasions with cheese? 100%. Like, <laughs> especially things like brunch and just trying to show people that you can have cheese any time of the day. Um, those earlier starts, like especially pre-races, it's usually delicious goat's cheeses from the Loire with those brain-like rinds mm. that are all about that um, acid, citrus notes, hint of goatiness, but not too strong. Comte, any time of the day, including midnight snack, triple cream brie, especially from, you know, um, Burgundy of France with that rich butteriness. Uh, the Daffinoir, for example, that's always got its place at parties. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. and. Mm. Uh, cheddars for after after dinner. Um, if it's a hot day, again, lighter style of cheeses. So there's a cheese that sort of sits in between a white mould and a wash rinds. Um, they're called sort of surface ripened cheeses. The famous one, St. Marcelin from the Rhone Alps just before, uh, below Lyon. Uh, that one's all about, again, gentle sweetness, gentle heaviness in terms of texture and just lactic notes and that that in the hot weather you can have very easily mm. like it's not like oh no cheese on a hot day it's gonna stink it's like nah this it's like velvet in winter if you're doing pears and apples a great one to match in summer any stone fruit like cherries uh the figs that kick in now towards autumn the purple figs just having a, a surface ripened cheese that's what we call vacherin style with that style of fruit with this sparkling red uh, magic, absolutely magic.
Well, I want, still want to say towards the end of this, after we taste our next wine, yep. I, I'm going to ask you for some affordable wine, uh, yeah. some affordable cheese and wine pairings. 100%. Um, because I think it is important to recognize that we are having some very nice delicacies in front of us. Yes. And that yeah. might not be achievable for a lot of people. No. But, you know, there might be some brands out there which you yeah. do endorse. So yeah. stick around for that. Yeah. But let's move on to our <laughs> third wine. Anthony, I'm very excited about this one because I don't have enough fortified wines. Perfect. So this is Black and Blue from Inkwell in McLaren Vale in South Australia. This is their fortified Zinfandel. Cool. And this is what I love. Such a great grape variety right. as well. Underripped. You know, this with vanilla ice cream, it doesn't have to just be cheese. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. What the hell? All right, it dances on the tongue. How much is this a bottle? Uh, this is quite cheap. It, most people will retail it anywhere between 40 and 55 a bottle. I mean, you're not getting 750 mils. No. You're just getting the 375, so a half bottle. But, but 60 oh, mils fun. per person is more than enough for this oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is like um, sipping on a, you know, whiskey rather than yeah. having a big gulp of wine. 100%. So and you cheese... dare to match the blues. Yeah, 100%. Like blue and... And high alcohol, high sugar content is amazing. And this is when you bring out your inner child where you want to have a little bit of the cheese on the palate as you drink the wine again and just wash them together and watch what happens. Mm. Mm. For one, I just want to shout out this cheese. That is not the aggressive blue na um, blue vein cheese that I'm you know used to, having out of coals or something like that. Mm. Sorry to say. So that is Australia's best blue. This is Riverine Blue. It's a buffalo milk blue from Gippsland from Barry's Creek. So Barry Charlton and his team, they made that by accident uh, when their neighbour had excess buffalo milk. Like he's known for his cow's milk blues. And he hit the nail on the head when he made this Riverine Blue. And buffalo milk is one of the hardest milks to make a blue cheese because of the high fat content plus the larger fat globules. You, you can get it so wrong if your pH isn't balanced. Like... A bad version of this would be burning your mouth and you'd be getting very bad acrid and ammonia flavors because you can spoil it very easily. But he just seems to hit a home run every batch of this cheese. You get the flavor of the milk mm. first because this is a natural rinder blue. So there's two two styles of blues out there. There's the ones with the foil on the outside yep. where it's all about the blue notes and the creaminess. And then there's ones like this guy, which is natural rinded. So they allow the cheese to mature first. So you develop the breakdown of the curds on the insides, the flavour profile of the milk comes through and then they spike it to allow the oxidisation to interact with the blue that's already in the cheese. To Science. Then, then grow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. And yeah. in wine, we speak about long finishes. Yeah. I've had a taste of that 30, 40 seconds ago. And still there, right? Still getting it. Yeah. And I've had a, another taste of the wine since, but I can still get that blue. Yeah. Fantastic. How much is that? That's got to be obviously... Yeah, so for an Australian blue, that averages anywhere between 70 and 80 a kilo, that blue. Okay. And honestly, 100 grams between four people is perfect for after dinner. But let's get, let's talk about, you know, yeah. affordability. These yeah. are, you know, celebration cheeses. Yeah, 100%. Um, and what an ex thank you so much for the experience. That's all right. You go into Coles. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I'm coming to the Pram Markets. Yes. Don't worry. I'm not going back to Coles. <laughs> you know, you have my mark. Yeah. But for people who go into a Coles, um, yeah. I have a place called Happy Apple. It's a little kind of boutique shopping center near me. Yeah. And they have a great, well, no, I won't say great. I'll say a huge cheese selection, yeah. like hundreds of cheese, all individually wrapped with the prices on them. Yeah. Um, you know, King Island cheeses and international cheeses. And they do the same with hams and, and salamis and olives and everything. Yeah. What am I looking for? What are some key notes that I should be looking for? And maybe some brands that you do see as accessible and mostly yeah, sold. So King Island Roaring 40s. Um, I, I really enjoy that blue. That's the heavier blue. So I'd be doing a fortified wine, particularly from the Rutherglen uh, oh, yeah. with that one there. Um, you know, that cheese is in America. That was one of the first Australian cheeses to be exported to America and it, and it does extremely well. Oh, cool. um, I love the Meredith marinated cheese as well and that is a great starter especially you know if you're doing an a asian cuisine where you're you're pairing rieslings or high acid white wines with what's to come or if you're doing a seafood again a seafood menu and you need those style of white wines they work well with that particular cheese because they also cut through the oil and the marinade of that cheese 
Anthony, before you go, do you think there is a cheese in the world that you haven't paired, tried, talked about, tasted or inquired about? Yes. There's a few, have to be a few, right? There is so many out there. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if today I've brought in one. All right. What would an expert, at one point, you came fourth in the world's best cheese monger competition. What would you pair with this? <laughs> to be honest, I used to smash them as a kid. So the only thing I'm going to say is Cotty's Summer Crush. <laughs> Because I used to drink that as a kid playing cricket outdoors. I wasn't allowed to. Mm -hmm. We had a grandfather with corrugated iron fences on one side mm -hmm. and his beautiful orchids on the other. <laughs> and we were not allowed to either nick the ball and get out or smash a fall and damage the orchards because he would come out screaming. And that just brought mm -hmm. me back to that. But in all seriousness, with that cheese, I, I would do a delicious... And I'm sorry, B, but I love your Crawford River Cab Sav 2017. Okay. That with its deep cherry notes with that cheese would would be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> now, we haven't told the people who are listening what this is, and you're not going to find out until you head to our Instagram, at GotSom, where you're going to see this video right now and the cheese that I'm holding up. I'll also tell you a funny little bit about this cheese. It's been in my pocket all day. Yeah. And it's been on the train, it's been to my uh, child's daycare drop-off, and I actually thought I'd put it in the fridge. I asked our producer, Amelia, to leave the room to see if I put it at the desk, but it is pretty gross, and it's been in my pocket for the last eight hours. Yeah, so, but the way they're made, it's still safe. <laughs> that's right. This is bulletproof. I'm going to take this back, and it'll end up uh, still being consumed by somebody, but you'll have to head to our Instagram or our YouTube to find out. And it's not the laughing cow cheese. It's a oh, great call. People will think it's the laughing cow. It is not. Anthony Femia from Maker and Monger at the Paran Markets. Uh, thank you so much for an introduction into tasting cheese and wine and a great insight into how you as an expert pair wine with cheese. Uh, I've definitely taken some really great key learnings out about this, just some fundamental stuff as well. Um, and I'll never taste and drink blue cheese with wine the same again. No. Thank you. Thank you very much.